We're here with another tech short on the Fraction Finder with Tim from Aerometrics. And let's just get into the Fraction Finder and... Can we talk about the other thing first? Like how it? this whole thing yeah. came to be? Yeah. Let's, Can let's, I tell let's my story? About. Yeah, go ahead. So we had just finished that project for that, for that controller. And it, the BBC and, one, right? Right. And, yeah. and it worked great. And we were kind of like high-fiving and happy, happy, joy, joy. We're thinking, hey, what else can we do together? Yeah. And you came up to one of your short pass systems. You're like, you know, if you shine UV light on here like a black light, I see green. What yeah. can you do with that? Remember yeah. that? Yeah. We and, see something. We didn't know what we were seeing. Right. And, and what light do we really use? And that got the whole process thinking. Yeah. So... Uh, I think so that, that whole thing yeah. kicked off, I don't know, Elliot. So then I have a bunch of PhD friends. So they went out and did, did all this literature search on cannabinoids and fluorescence and UV. You know what they found? Mm. Big old nothing. Yeah. That work had not been done. It had never been done. There was something done in the 70s and then the government squashed it, blah, blah, blah. So no work had been done about fluorescence and, and, and cannabinoids and, and, and the connection at all. Mm -hmm. So remember... So we said, okay, I guess the literature search showed up nothing. Yeah. So that means we have to do our own research. Yep. So remember, we like six in, months later, yeah. I came back, you set me up with all your pals, they brought in some good stuff. Yep, 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 yep. We had uh, samples brought in from every type of distillation process, from D8, D9, CBD, uh, like low potency THC from the, uh, from like an evaporator and stuff yep. like that. Yep. And we tested every single one and just to get the answer we needed. Cause, yeah. Because it wasn't like HPLC. HPLC is where you separate in a chromatography column and it comes out in like steps and you can read what those steps are, but it doesn't give you a collective character or data of what's coming off the stream of our system. So we have to get that information from scratch. So yeah, you guys were here for a while doing that too. Yeah. And, and the whole problem we were trying to solve is this short path thing is not trivial. You know, it takes a craftsman to really get yes. this done right. And how can we make it easier? The whole thing was, how can we make this easier? And that started with, let's figure out what is actually flowing and what we can identify. Mm -hmm. So we, we brought in monochromators and spectrometers and all that kind of stuff to figure out what wavelengths we needed, if cannabinoids even fluoresce. And mm -hmm. it was in that research, and that's where yeah. we, we published that paper, that they indeed do, and here are the wavelengths, yeah. and voila. Yeah, and we actually started seeing more than, than what we were noticing because we were going after the first uh, bits of the distillation was mostly people's maybe off batches or really good batches or just in-betweens or in the in-between fractions. But then when you start running the machine, you have a stream of data that you have to reinterpret and create a uh, user interface for. And that's what this, the unique part about what you guys did. Because right. anybody could just put a UV light there and get some kind of a stream of data, but you have to split that all up. You have to, uh, like you have obviously tricks of the trade and secrets there, but that's the whole heart and brain of the system is right there. Right, yeah. and do you remember MJ Biz 2017? Yes. We put this on a, a system and we said, this is what it's gonna do. And do you remember that reaction? What is this? That was a crazy reaction, yeah. like, no way. You can yeah. actually tell me yeah. when D9 is flowing. Yeah. Are you crazy? And, and that's I don't think anybody made... thought of that because everyone assumed the only way to do this is through chromatography, which would have been, I think I mentioned to you the original idea is to have, which before we did too much laminar, we had cows and we're like, why don't we have like a little spot there where we have a, a cork and we throw a needle in there, pull a sample and then send it through an HPL machine. And, and HPLC, and then all of a sudden you have a very accurate result what's going on, but that takes a long time to go through. It's not a in-motion sensing. So uh, once we were able to figure this out and get it put together, it's been an amazing tool for customers. I mean, it's not even to say that you can tell someone, oh, I can fix your distillation overnight with just the different uh, regions and, and the, the different data that it describes, but you are able to show a customer their progression on the graph of the patterns through their distillation. So their distillation gets better and their pattern starts to look different and they get used to that and they know when they're in uh, the heads fraction, main body or tails and other ones. I mean, tell us about the different things that it can actually see for the customers. Yeah, and uh, you use the word see and it's funny when we were doing that initial research when we, you know, we got the reaction, mm -hmm. we created a prototype and we went and yep. went to some of your customers and, and they were working with it. And uh, I knew we had something really good when they turned off the lights. Yes. Because they wanted to see what that said as opposed to what their eyes said. And that's yeah. when we're like, okay. I think now it kind of deletes this is good. that, right? This is good, yeah. So in the early prototype, we had some bugs, right? But in this one, it takes care of that. Like I can flash the light on here and then it sort of cancels it out. So you don't need to do that. You want Earlier. to show us? Or? Yeah, sure. So Tim, go ahead and show us some of the features of the device that is attached to the short path with a detailed screen here for us. Gotcha. And is this in the uh, thing here? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So... The first thing, the, the first part of the fraction finder is this. This is the sensor. 
What is composed in this sensor is a, a few pieces. There's a light source mm -hmm. and there's a full wavelength spectrometer. So what that means is we put a point uh, uh, nanometer uh, wavelength of light through uh, whatever is flowing and then we look at all the wavelengths that come out. It's not looking at the light, it's looking at the stuff that reflects off the material. So light will hit the material and excite numerous different wavelengths at that, at, at that point, and then it will absorb that and start taking data off which wavelengths it's seen. Yeah, and, and, and the, the, the term to what, for what you just described is fluorescence. It's that, it's that thing where we put a, a specific um, wavelength of light and we get out different wavelengths of light mm -hmm. um, based on the molecular content. Yes. So some molecules fluoresce, some molecules don't fluoresce. Mm -hmm. THC fluoresces. Yes. And everything <laughs> else behind it. fluoresces. Uh, uh, many lipids fluoresce. And show us how the features focus on the signal that we're looking for and starts to delete things in the background, like room light and things like that. Oh yeah, for example, we use excitation, we, we see everything that comes. So for example, I can put a light in here and you might see an initial change, but then what happens is the fraction finder is smart enough to there make it that go away. Exactly. So it, uh, it actually averages out. We didn't have that you know, in, uh, in the prototype yeah, yeah. race, but we have that now. So, so uh, based on that research that we did um, and that we published, what we know is that if we um, excite uh, cannabis oil um, uh, with, with uh, this uh, 365 nanometer uh, wavelength, we know that what fluoresces back at 420 to 450 is delta 9. We know that to be true. So what we've mm -hmm. done, we didn't have this initially, but what, what we- What was the wavelength that fluoresces back at? It's, uh, I think it's about 420. Okay, okay. Isn't, isn't that very, kind of funny? It's, very, very interesting, it's okay. Kind of, we thought it was exactly 420, but actually <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a- Wow. Uh, it's kind of funny, right? But so, so what we can do in here, you look at um, the Delta 9 peak here, it's green. Mm -hmm. So you can actually see- um, That's the region. Right, so if you were to see a hump or a bunch of activity in this region, you know that you're seeing that. You know you're seeing delta nine. Now it could okay. be, for example, that that certain molecules they 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 might also fluoresce at that wavelength. But what we or know, or maybe delta nine in the the azotrope that's that is currently distilling at that moment. That's right. So okay. what we know is that uh, delta nine, and we know when you extract and you see delta nine before it's decarboxylated. We know that um, that whole thing that 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 both of those molecules actually fluoresce in this wavelength. Interesting. And, and the nice thing is that we can see it. So in the earlier version of software, it's just a bunch of squiggly lines. Yes. And one of the things, the whole point of this is to make it easy. So if it's not easy, then it's a problem. Yeah. So what we've been trying to do over time is make it easier to use this thing. So a lot of the users who purchased it initially and mastered reading that screen were the ones who gave us a lot of that data and said, hey, I know where it's going to be at because I can see it every single time. This is where it's at. Yep. And then you guys also have been going on site and working with them and actually buying it yourselves. And I see there's a couple other things where you can have a custom region, you can program wherever that's at. You can say one of them that you're looking at is Delta 9, and the other one is chlorophyll, right? Yep. So an example of that is, let's just say you have, you're on your fraction, and the THC peak goes down and the chlorophyll peak goes up, you're pulling out tails, for instance, right? Yep, yep. So it's a good identifier when you're going in and out of fractions. Yeah, and, and for sure. So if you're doing short path and you're seeing chlorophyll, you should stop and you should go clean that stuff because there's no reason at this point yeah. in, the, in the purification process, exactly. you should be seeing chlorophyll. So And the chlorophyll will also muddy up what other things you're trying to look for because chlorophyll triggers pretty aggressively, right? It does, uh, but the, the cool thing about chlorophyll specifically is it actually uh, triggers, it's not a cool number like 710 or anything like yeah. that, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, 67 to 750. Okay. So chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. And the nice thing is that particular wavelength set is away from the D9 and away from the lipid. So if you see chlorophyll, it tends to be a very obvious signature. Excellent. I like that a lot. I have had the uh, the greatest result with customers being satisfied with the product and they jump into it and they always say, hey, can your product just do the job for me or tell me everything? I know it's getting more advanced and it's giving the customers more information, but it's not just what the fraction miner on its own with its settings offers the customers, but they always say, it shows me things I didn't even know. Parts so, of my process that I had no idea that was really going on and I'm seeing things and then as I become better, I don't see things or it changes that graph and it's, a, it's just a pattern that you follow every day when you're running it, you know? Yeah, we've got a, um, a customer named Mac, he coined the term an oddity detector. Excellent. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So, so he'll see things and there are things that we know we see. There are things that we've seen before and we can tell the customer, hey, D9, 420 mm -hmm. to 450. But um, uh, there's, not everything for us is, but quite a bit does. And if you're looking at, uh, at a signature here that's not normally what you're used to seeing, it could be odd. Maybe you should stop and get that stuff tested. Maybe something's wrong. Yeah. So what Mac found is if he got um, uh, raw material that, let's say, wasn't of the highest quality, 
um, it showed up here. Not that we're guaranteeing it always will, but it often does. If there's something Excellent. present that, that shouldn't be there, you may see it here. And that, it's it just another, so it kind of enhances its ability to be a, yet another quality metric, like another double check. And also, it's, it's really good. The, the cool thing about this is, you know, you mentioned chromatography, mm -hmm. um, and, you, and you mentioned um, uh, the um, HPLCs yes. and all that kind of stuff. So HPLC specifically, it's not an in-situ thing. It's not a real-time thing. It's yeah. something that you do after you're done. So and you're already separating things, and if you don't separate it, even those machines can't differentiate it because they see a big, big curve, a big band of different UV fluorescence. This is the only way to look at what's the flowing, thing. the in-situ diagnostic. Yeah, it's with everything, you know? Yep. It's very, very interesting. I've had um, great success with this product. I'm sure you've heard amazing things, and also we'll be going into part two of this where we talk about the, the offshoot of what this has actually merge into the other photography yeah, exactly. and the, extraction, the other equipment you can be using blood detection exactly uh, the, so we've we've morphed this into quite a few things this yeah. this the 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 note what we've created the platform we've created is is quite strong yeah i remember in the beginning uh the most that i could offer was to be the silent side of it and <laughs> to say this is what we needed how much does it cost right you know um there's no way I could have done this. This is an amazing job by your guys' team. And the people you guys got put together, like you said, no one has done this before. It would have been impossible to have just pulled it up from nowhere. It's not easy. It, it really required starting from scratch. How many revisions have we gone through already? And I mean, they're all mostly the same. I know that most of the hardware is compatible and you can up, update it and stuff. But realistically, how much time have you put in as, as, as revisions to provide what is now still, like from day one to, to, to now, it's, there's nothing to it's it, it's it's in first place. There's 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 no other hardware that can even compete with what this can do. Nothing nothing close this time. Nope. Um, there and there's nothing else that uses uh, fluorescence uh, in line um, for cannabinoid detection. So um, as far as revisions, uh, so here we're you know three years out, right? So the the sensor has seen you know three um, three electronic uh, mm -hmm. revisions um, and about 26 different, uh, revisions on this. Remember the first ones we, in prototype, they yes. melted. Yes. So we had to get a different material. Yep. 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 <laughs> and all those customers were taken care yeah, of. Yeah, of course, of course. But now all those temperature issues that have been resolved, chemical durability, all that stuff, right? Yep. And a lot of the smarts here is in the software. So the software revision, I don't know, probably about 28. Just because, so, yeah. you know, it, it takes so time. So we get feedback yes, and we're like, exactly. huh, that's a really good point. Let's, Let's fix this. That's and the thing. If you don't revise it, you're not moving forward, and your customers obviously aren't buying it. So the customers are really happy. We get really good results from them, and we can make changes for the customer use. Yep. In fact, what we had was uh, a really good idea a while back with Athena. So we had the software, which helps plug into uh, the Fraction Lighter. It's free. We get out with everyone. And it allows you to absorb this data on your whole track run, literally in motion. So while you're distilling with your temperatures, with your uh, vacuum, all those values are included and the UV, and we also have a graph that will separate the areas that you're actually looking for. For instance, if you want to select a, a UV zone for the heads, bodies, and tails, and you can watch the graph in real time move up and down, kind of like a movie screen. You can pick where that distillation was, where the temperature was. So the data that you can get off this right now and correlate back into software, like with Athena, which is free of charge, not to be a shameless plug, but <laughs> the software takes all of your data in your laboratory from the mantle to your the Apollo vacuum controller and with this and puts it together and you can click any one point and see where the fraction was, what the data coming off of it was and you can save it. So it's really good for, you know, GMP or laboratory type of situations where you can harvest that software into a graph and you just did a batch, we get your batch tested and then staple that this was the run data. This is what happened. So like you said, oddities, if there's something wrong with the batch and there's a problem, you can actually print it up and look at it and say, that's the spot that we had an issue. Let's let, let's let, let's look at what this was. You 100%. Know? The more the better. The more the more independent points you can correlate, mm -hmm. the better. So um, before Fraction Finder, you had temperature, mm -hmm. uh, you had vacuum, and you had your eyes. That's it. Now we've got a lot more. We've got precise vacuum. We've got precise temperature. We've got molecular identification as it's yep. going through that can now be correlated with everything, and your eyes. And you also have an app too on an independent scale for this, for customers who purchase this that maybe don't have the whole collection of hardware and the high-end gear that we package together with the Athena software because we can't make Athena work with everything. No. But you do have software that you can attach to this that is called? Uh, the DAB app. There we go. <laughs> uh, the, the data uh, analysis platform. <laughs> that's, that's amazing yeah. how that came together, <laughs> just, you know, perfect. So, so the, um, the, the cool thing about the DAB app is uh, when you're looking at this, you see all this instantaneous information, and sometimes it's hard. You know, you take pictures and stuff, but it's hard to correlate. So now, what this app does is it allows you to see 
your whole entire run and click on so you get that screen. So you can actually look at your run and analyze it after you're done pouring stuff and playing with you know mm -hmm. values and knobs and things like that and really do some research and dig in and say, oh, this happened, I wonder what this is, look for it next time. So it really allows you to evolve your craft. That's really cool, yeah. especially for customers who might not want to spend a whole lot of money on everything and they're getting into the, the, the game and they know that the ROI on a product like this with the analytical, analytical data behind it is a huge value because they don't have to waste material or make experiments or make guesses. You know, I, we were talking about um, vacuum controllers and when someone brings in a bad vacuum pump and they say, no, my pump was great, you did a bad job doing this or that or they contaminated it. Well, if you have a really good gauge and tells you that there's no mysteries. In the same instance, there's no mysteries. They can't tell their buddy or their coworker, I don't know what happened. There's exactly what happened. So you can attach it to the system, run it, monitor it, save the data, and then use it. Absolutely.